Well, good evening, everybody. You guys can have a seat. It's good to see you here tonight, Kairos. If we haven't met yet, my name is Mike. I'm the Kairos pastor. And uh, thanks, Cameron. And uh, I'm so glad to have you guys here tonight. Did everybody have a good uh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. yeah? Anybody eat too much? I, I think I ate like four slices of pie. I'm a sucker for pumpkin pie, and I, I just probably overdid it. But I, I'm just going to tell you, this comes around once a year, and you got to take advantage, right? Um, yeah. So uh, tonight, we are finishing up our series, People of Yes, which has been a series where we've said, we want to be people who, when God asks us the question, we want to say yes to it. We just want to say, God, whatever you want to do with my life, I'm in. And so we're going to be finishing up that series for our, uh, uh, th- this fall, and, and, and we're going to be transitioning to Christmas next year. But what you're going to find tonight is that we're going to be studying the life of Mary as she says yes to God. So you're going to see a little bit of a bridge tonight between uh, the series we've just been in and where we're going at Christmas. Because next week, it's Christmas at Kairos, and it's going to be awesome, okay? It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, um, tonight we're going to be answering a question. And this question, to be honest, is like, a little bit of an awkward question. It's, it's one that you almost have to like uh, ask permission to ask. It's the silent part. Have you ever like been in a, a conversation where somebody said the quiet part, the part you're not supposed to say? Uh, we're going to be asking that kind of a question tonight. So we've been talking about what it means to say yes to God. And we've been asking these questions every week. We've been saying, okay, so if God is asking us a question, how can I get to a place where I can be, be quiet enough, where I can hear God's voice? and be close enough to, to hear what he's even asking me to do, right? So we talked about that out of Samuel's life. And then last week we talked about uh, what, what do I do after he asks me to, to do the thing he's asking me to do? Like what's the next thing that I'm supposed to do? What's the next step? We walked through that last week. And tonight the question we're asking is, uh, the, again, this is the awkward part. So forgive me if you feel uncomfortable with me even asking this question. But the question is this. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? What's in it for me if I say yes to God? What am I going to get out of it? And um, uh, several years ago, I got a a chance to plant a church here in Nashville, and I was recruiting people. Every time I met somebody, I was like asking them to join the church. I was like, hey, you should be a part of this because I believe in it. I feel like God's calling us to do this. And I remember one time I sat down with a young man, and I was so Uh, glad that we had become friends. I wanted him to be a part of it so badly, and I was like so fired up because I thought he'd be a key part of what we were doing. And so I remember actually sitting down with him at coffee, and I was like, hey, man, I just want you to be a part of this. I think it's going to be awesome. And he asked me that question. He said, what's in it for me? And I was like, "Uh, I don't know. Like, literally, there's, it's not really about you. And I think sometimes when we come to God, we ask that same question. We don't necessarily want to say it. It's the quiet part, right? We just kind of feel it. We're not sure if we want to do it because we're not sure what it's going to cost. And I think Mary's story is going to give us a lot of clarity as she says yes to God in two key ways. We're going to look at two things that she says yes to that I think will help us come to grips with what's in it for us to say yes to God. Um, And I hope that we'll move beyond a transactional relationship tonight as we look at what it looks like to follow God. And so look with me in... Luke chapter 1, I told you we're going to get Christmassy tonight. Even though it's not a Christmas series, we're getting Christmassy, so we can't help ourselves. We're going to look at the story of, of Mary hearing for the first time that, that, that she's going to be pregnant, and that she's going to have a baby, and it's going to be Jesus. So look with me in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. You're going to see the, the words on the screen as well. And it says this, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, 
how can this be since I've not had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called childless. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel left her. Now, tonight, we, we see this story. And this is a story that sets up Christmas because it's the the Annunciation that Christ was going to be born. And we find uh, Mary hearing from the angel that she's going to have a baby. Um, and, and he's not going to be like any other baby. He's going to be a baby that is not just going to be a man. He's going to be the son of God. If you were Jewish at this time, this phrase, the son of God, would have incredible weight behind it. Because when you said someone was the son of somebody else, it meant that they were just like that thing or that person, that they were actually the same essence. And so she's hearing from the angel, you're going to give birth to God. And I can't imagine what's going on through her head. But I do know one thing's for sure. It's Christmas time. And uh, Christmas is great. One of the things I love about Christmas is Christmas music. Anybody else like Christmas music in the room? Right? It's good. Some of you have been playing it since June. I'm not going to shame you tonight. It's okay. Um, But uh, Christmas music is special. And I love Christmas songs. My kids love listening to the Grinch. And they listen to it all the time to the point that I have to have a moratorium. Only one Grinch playing of uh, a day because we can't like take it anymore, right? Uh, But one of the things I do know is that there are favorite Christmas songs and then there are some that I just despise. And one of the ones that I despise is Mary Did You Know. Do you guys know that song? Mary Did You Know That Your Baby Boy Would, you know, Be the Son of God? And I always listen to it as a theologian. I'm like, she knew! (laughs) There's a serious problem with the song. She knew. The Bible just told us that she knew. The angel's like, you're going to have a son, and his name's going to be Jesus, and he's going to be the son of the Most High. So every time you hear that song, you're also going to have it ruined for you. Just know that. You're going to be like, she knew. Come on. All right? But as we hear this, we find that this story is not as romantic as it seems. Like, we hear the story, we're like, oh, man, it's so cool. An angel came to Mary, and she's going to have a baby, and that's the best news, and this is, like, the best you know, gender reveal of all time, like some people actually have to like, you know, have like, uh, like things that they hit with golf ball, a golf club, and then it becomes like, you know, whether it's blue or, or, or pink, and she actually gets an angel to tell her what it's going to be. Like, this is awesome, right? But that's not what happened. You find incredible disruption happening in her life. Because before... Mary gets to say yes to God. She also hears a lot of things she's going to be saying no to. You see, for her, God's question, will you be the mother of Jesus, means that she's going to say no to a lot of things that she's been dreaming of. Her whole life is going to turn upside down. She's going to face an incredible amount of disruption because she says yes to God. But Mary says yes to two things in the story. The first is this, is that Mary says yes to God's interruption. And if we want to be people who love God and follow him, we need to be people who say yes to God's interruption in our life. We need to be willing to say yes when God interrupts us because God is throwing a complete monkey wrench into Mary's life. Up to this point, she's engaged to be married. She's Mary uh, engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. Mary's very young. She's probably 14 or 15 years old. And she's got a whole life ahead of her. And the reason she's getting married so young is that they didn't have prolonged adolescence like we do. Like, you know, for most of us, when we hit like 25, we're just hitting our stride, right? We're just like finally figuring some things out. We hit 35, you're like, okay, I'm learning some things about life. 45, you're like, okay, I think I know who I am, right? Back then, man, people didn't live much past 40. So they're like, let's get going with life, right? So Mary's 14, 15. She's engaged to be married. And she's got 
life figured out. She thinks she knows where life is headed. She's married to, going to be married to a guy named Joseph who's a builder, he's a carpenter, and, and she thinks that they're going to have that perfect Nazareth life, right? They're going to have their kids. They're going to live there. She's got stability. And the angel says, hey, listen, God's asking you a question. Will you say yes? And if you say yes, everything is going to be interrupted. And Mary, when she says yes to God, she knows that she's saying no to what she was expecting her life to look like. And when she says yes to God, she's probably saying no to Joseph. You see, here's the deal. In Mary's day, you did not get pregnant before you were married. And this sort of brought incredible shame to her. And listen, if, you're, if you've been pregnant before you are married, this is not to shame you, but I'm just telling you, in Mary's day, this would have been incredibly shameful. In fact, it would have been dangerous for her. And Joseph could have broken off the relationship. In fact, the Bible tells us he thought about doing it. And she's giving away the most important relationship that she has, the safety that she has, the future that she has, so that she can say yes to God. And there will be times where you will be faced with a choice. God will interrupt your life, and he will call you into something that you never thought was coming for you. There might be a season where you face cancer, where you go through a season of incredible depression or loneliness. You may lose your job. You may have somebody leave you. You may have a betrayal, and you may go, what is God doing in the middle of this? He's interrupting the way that I thought it was going to go. This is not the deal I signed with God because I thought if I obeyed, then he was gonna give me good stuff, but I'm only facing interruption. And so we, if we wanna really follow God, we need to be willing to say yes, even though it's interrupting our life, even though it's messing with our plan because we know that God has a better plan. That's where faith comes into play, where we say yes, to God. And that's what Mary does. Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. Look with me, verse 38. She goes, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your word. This is why Mary was chosen. She didn't have money. She didn't have power. She had no fame. She didn't even own a house. And yet God's like, this is the one that I want. This is the one. This is the one that I want to be the mother of my son, Jesus. This girl who in the eyes of the world seems to have nothing to offer, God's like, that's the one. Why? Because she says yes. And I love it. Like she doesn't, she doesn't take a whole lot of time at all, right? She doesn't say, hey, God, I need to pray about this one. Because like who's she going to pray to, by the way, right? God, if it's in your will, God's like, I'm right here. I want you to have this baby, right? Like, there's, there's no one else for her to go to. She's not saying, hey, God, so you have something, I have something you want? Let's, let's, let's make a deal, right? She doesn't negotiate with God. She's like, God, you want a mom? I'll be a mom, but like, in return, would you give me long health and that I would like prosper in everything I do? She doesn't do that. She simply says, whatever it is you want, God, I'm in. I will embrace the interruption. Which brings us back to this question. What do we get out of it? I want you to just think about that right now. What do you get out of following God? What do you get out of following God? Well, Mary, you know what she gets? She gets Jesus, literally. What she gets out of it is she gets Jesus. She gets to be the mother of God. She gets to actually experience what God says about Jesus, that he is Emmanuel, that he is God with us, he's among us. She gets to actually experience that in a way no one else does. She gets 
to walk with God, which, by the way, would be so intimidating, right? To be at a place where you're like, okay, I, I'm now the mother of God, and he's always right, <laughs> okay? Like, if we're in a disagreement, he's probably right, and I'm not. That's got to be so humbling. And yet, I believe that Mary never looked back and never questioned her choice because what she received was so much more than anything she could have had in the other path that she had cho could have chosen. What she received in Jesus was so much more worthy and so much more wonderful than she could have ever imagined because when she said yes to God, she understood that our act of saying yes is a choice to worship. And here's our bottom line for the night. Our bottom line is this. Our yes is an act of worship. Our yes is an act of worship. When we say yes to God, we worship in the most powerful way that a person can worship. Sometimes we think worship is simply singing. But Paul in Romans 12 says we should lay our life down as a living sacrifice. That is our act of worship. When we say, God, your will, not mine, that is our act of worship. And Mary gets it because she goes, God, whatever it is that you want to do, I'm going to do it. And that's where she says yes to. She not only says yes to Jesus, she says yes to worship. So the two things she says yes to. First, she says yes to God's interruption. Second, she says yes to worship. And the reason we know that is we see it in the Bible. The very next thing Mary does is she writes a worship song. So you didn't know this about Mary, but she's a singer-songwriter. She would fit right in Nashville, right? She's a singer-songwriter. She, she writes songs. She's an artist. Mary, God's mother, the mother of Jesus, is an artist. And what you find her doing is that she writes a song about what she's thinking. And, and what we know about the book of Luke that, that this story is contained in is that the guy who wrote it, Luke, who's a medical doctor uh, and a historian, was asked to write an account of Jesus' life. And so he does it as a historian. He goes to all the eyewitnesses he can round up and says, hey, tell me about the time that Jesus like, fed 5,000 people. I want to hear that from you. Can you just tell me the story? And he, then he goes to Peter and goes, hey, tell me about the time that you were walking on the water and, 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 and then you fell in. Just, can you just tell me that story. I'd like to get that story recorded. And I know that he probably went to Mary and said, okay, hey, Mary, can you just give me some early childhood stories from, so, for some deep background on Jesus, right? I just kind of want to know like, what it was like to be... Uh, Jesus' mom. And I, I, I just wonder if, if Mary like reaches behind her and she, she, she pulls out a piece of paper and she goes, you know what, I know what it was like. I wrote a song about it. Can I, can I sing it to you? And Luke just sits there and just weeps as she sings the song that she wrote after she heard that she was gonna give birth to Jesus. And he goes, can I take that with me? Because people need to hear this song. And let me just read you just a portion of it. In Luke chapter 1, verse 46, so the very next page, you'll see it on your Bible. She says this. She says, my soul praises the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has looked with favor on the humble condition of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed because the mighty one has done great things for me and his name is holy. See, Mary knows that obedience is about worship and her obedience led her to a place of worship. And because she was obedient, we get to worship. Do you see that? The reason why we're in this room is because Mary said yes. The reason why we get to sing is because she said, God, I'm in. 
And the reason why we get to celebrate Christmas is because a 14-year-old girl, even though she knew that everything was on the line and everything that she knew was disrupted and everything that she knew about her future was just all of a sudden just upside down and gone, she knew that there was someone who had a greater plan. And if she said yes to it, she got to see God do something incredible. And what she got was she got Jesus. And the same thing is true for you and I. That's why I saved this story for last in our series, People of Yes, because I believe that there is something that God wants to do in your story. God is inviting you to take a step of worship by saying yes. You may not even know what the question is yet. It may come this month, it may come next year, but we as a people, we want to be people who say, God, whenever the question comes, my answer is yes. And so I think one of the best things we can do is to start saying yes to the things that we know he's telling us to do already. Even some of the smaller things that we go, okay, I can say yes to that. We can take baby steps so that we're ready when he actually brings us with the big question that he's going to ask us. We can say yes. We can be practiced at saying Yes. And so tonight, um, we've, we've been doing this all day today. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, as a ministry, we decided we'd try something new to practice saying yes. Uh, and today's Giving Tuesday. It's like a worldwide phenomenon where nonprofits raise money to uh, help people in need. And on Giving Tuesday this year, we said, let's partner with a local ministry that helps overcome uh, systemic poverty in our city. And they do it one story at a time. And so Project Connect is a ministry that was birthed out of uh, our church and actually people that served there and worked there came from Kairos. A couple of the guys on staff there like were sitting right where you're sitting at one point in their life and then in their story. And what they do is they try to help people have the skills and support that people need to overcome poverty. And so we said, let's pick two, two families that need help and help them have housing so they can go through this program, get a job, and uh, stay off the street forever. And so um, we wanted to just show you one video of one of the families we're going to be helping tonight. This is a lady named Mary. You're going to see her story. She's got two girls. She's a single mom. And uh, it's one of the families we're trying to raise $10,000 for to help them have a place to live this year so that she can get a job and she can beat the history of poverty that her family's experienced and have a different future for her family. And it's just one way for us to say yes. And so we thought we'd just put this in front of you as a way we can practice saying yes, okay? Just an easy step for us to do that. So if you guys would look at the screen with me, um, I want you guys to see the story. Nobody saw the greatness in me. Nobody saw the love I had. Nobody saw me for me. They only saw a young black woman on drugs, ruining her life. But God gave me a second chance. He did. He did. And now I'm trying to walk with him. And this program is showing me that there is more to life. That there are great people in life that God created people to love and care. My dad actually set us up with Project Connect and gave us a meeting and all that really changed our life. I mean, it really did. We were in a bad situation and had nothing and then we got the baby, you know, and he was just right after six months old at the time. And uh, everything we had was, was stolen from us. So we had no options of anything and we had the baby to think about. So when we got set up Project Connect and just the very next day, we were, had so much stress relieved off of us. We thought we were doing all right, you know, and then uh, all the tragedy hit. You never know when stuff's gonna happen. We didn't exactly have a million dollars in the bank put back, you know, we didn't think anything would happen like that. So when we fell, we had just had the baby, you know, he's five, six months old, and we were just like, oh man, what are we gonna do, you know? So we have family, but you know, uh, they kinda are the do it on your own type. I've always had to work 
So, uh, you know, it was a, just heaven sent. We did a lot of praying, and then her dad came out of the blue, and hey, look, I've got this thing, these people I know, Matt, you know, it was the first name we heard. And immediately, I was like, wow, this guy's awesome. He's gonna help us, you know, and he liked her dad, and uh, he introduced us to that, and you know, ball got rolling. We met Stephanie after, and boom, everybody we met was just fantastic. Hannah and all of them, just great people. It's good to learn how to balance life and the finances that God provides for you. And I learned that God only, he helps provide those finances for you so that you can move along in life. One major thing that stuck out with me in faith and finance is manage your money and learn how to spend what needs to be spent and save and don't spend it on what you don't need to spend it on, but spend on what you need to. It's a great community. I love the people in, in the Project Connect. Um, they love me. <laughs> they show me love, I show them love. From the barbecue to the hands-on experience, like I had COVID. When I had COVID, uh, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to talk to. I called Miss Steph and she was the first one, what do you need? What's going on? What can we send you? So it's like, you know, they're very close to you. Nothing I say really, you know, or do is of a surprise to them. This is a safe place. This is a place you can come. Even though you're going through trauma, you're going through despair, there are people there that care for you. There are people that love you. This program could help you through life and you can make it through. You can get through this. Project Connect came into our life and saved us and our son's life, really. Well, since he was born in that, he hasn't been out of the house, but a handful of times, this is the only place he comes. So I bet he met Matt and Stephanie before he met most of our family. <laughs> I don't think he's met hardly any of our family except our intermediate, maybe a couple aunts or uncles, but he's been around Project Connect more than anybody. He probably thinks they're family, I'm sure. Well, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, it is a family. So now you see why we want to do this. Because when I see faces with hope where they were hopeless before, that gets under my skin. Um, and so like uh, Mary, the, the lady who's the mom with two girls, that's one of the families that we're going to try to help have a place to live this year so she can learn how to have a future and to have the skills she needs to actually maintain it and put her kids to college and have a different story for them. And so uh, I've got two friends with me. Uh, you guys know Grace. Grace is our missions intern. And then this is Keith. Keith is uh, our mobilizations uh, pastor here at Brentwood Baptist. And uh, they both have a huge heart for missions. Keith was a missionary in Kenya for how many years? Six years. Six years. And so <clears throat> he's lived it overseas. He's living it out here. And I thought I'd just ask them uh, to uh, come on stage with us because I think it would be easy for us to help uh, give some of you some, some more information about how you can take a next step and say yes to God. And this might just be either the big step for you or a, a, a training step to be able to say yes in other ways. Uh, and so, uh, Grace, can you talk to us a little bit about Project Connect and why you love it? Yeah, so um, Project Connect is a ministry um, that I have got, been connected with for several years. And um, the more we started wanting to hone down, like, who are these local missions partners that Brentwood Baptist has already developed, like who of them really has a DNA that I feel like would resonate mm -hmm. with Kairos as a ministry. And Project Connect just really struck me because of how holistic they um, engage, the, you know, a person as a whole person. And one of the things that I've been learning, you know, and just spending time with them is how um, you know, they really push that um, poverty is something that everyone has in their lives. Mm -hmm. All of us in this room have poverty somewhere in our life. And so what that does is that evens the playing field with us, with the clients mm -hmm. that are going through these programs with Project Connect. Um, and it, yeah, it puts us all in the same playing field. And I love that that, uh, to me, it really reflects the gospel because mm -hmm. all of us before God have fallen short. And all of us, like none of us are in a better you know, more advantageous position on our own before God. Um, and what the gospel does is answers all of our brokenness. If it's financial brokenness, if it's brokenness of spirit, brokenness of emotions, of relationships, all of that, the gospel is an answer to that. And so that's really what Project Connect does is engage the whole person 
with the gospel. Um, and they do this through um, classes, through trauma healing, they have art therapy, they have faith and finances, they have work life. Um, and really their volunteer system is really set up to allow the church, people in the church to come and walk alongside these clients um, you know, and really show them who Christ is. So yeah, That's awesome. So um, to kind of put a bow on that, um, so we're trying to raise $10,000. I've said that number a lot of times. You hear that number, you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. You know, 10,000 uh, for some of us is a lot of money. For some of us, it's not. It's like, okay, cool, I could do that. Um, where do you want me to sign up? And if that's you, come find me afterwards. We'll make that happen, okay? And, and you probably should, to be honest, uh, because we could actually sponsor more families if we go over it. Um, but one of the things that it's been easier for me to kind of like put my head around this is if every single one of us gave $44, um, we can hit that number. So the, just the people that come to Kairos, not the people who see us online, We've been broadcasting this on Instagram all day. Uh, you can actually go see the place where the classrooms are. We kind of like talk through the curriculum and all that kind of stuff. It's all on, on our Instagram feed. But if you uh, want to just kind of break it down, if everybody that just kind of comes to Cairo gives $44, uh, then we can do this. And, and honestly, like that's like six lattes. You know, some of us go through that in a week. Some of us go through that in two or three days, just to be honest, right? We love coffee that much. I, I, I have a problem. I'll admit that I love coffee way too much. Uh, and so maybe that's just one way you could do this. You could say, like, I'm going to give up coffee for four days, and I'm going to help a family have a place to live for a year, right? And so if you want to do that, you can either go to our Instagram page, or you can just look at the screen. We're going to put up a QR code and go. There we go. Look at that magic. And uh, you can just scan that on your camera, phone, and it'll pop it up for you. Can I say um, one more thing about yes. that? Yes. So if you go to this QR code, you will get sent to the giving page, but you will also get, you also see a link to see um, volunteer options. Yeah. So if anything in that video struck you and you're like, man, I, that resonated with me, I want to get involved somehow, Project Connect has a ton of different ways to get involved, and you can go straight to their volunteer page. Everything is laid out. Um, they are actually having a Christmas party at the church at Woodbine on December 12th. Yeah. at 5 p.m. So what are some they, things people can do if they want to volunteer? Yeah, so one thing you can do is you can just show up at the Christmas <laughs> That's party. That's the easiest way to volunteer. Meet people, get, yeah. you know, get involved that way. Um, they need help, like, setting up for it. They need people to serve food for that. Um, if you're interested, you know, long-term, if you've, you know, with our Kyra small groups... Like if your group, um, one of the needs they have is um, on Sunday nights, that's when their classes meet. They have eight-week semesters that meet on Sunday nights. And they, um, one thing that all the clients do together every week is share a meal together and worship together. And so they need, a tangible need that they have every week is for someone to bring meals and serve food to the clients. Um, and so if that's something that your small group would want to do or you as a family might want to do um, is pick a, a week, you know, in every couple months mm -hmm. and bring a meal for them. If you play music and you love to lead worship, I mean, those are just very tangible ways that you can step in. So if you go to that QR code, you'll see all of that laid out. Awesome. I'm so glad you said that because I almost forgot about that. That's awesome. So some of you guys wonder like, okay, is Keith ever going to talk? Like this, <laughs> somebody's like up here anxious for Keith. And the reason we have Keith here is because Kairos is doing something we haven't done in a long time. In 2022, we're going to be taking our first two mission trips that we have taken in the last five years. So unless COVID shuts the whole world down again, we're going on mission trips, okay? So Keith, can you tell us about those mission trips and how we can sign up? Yeah, so there's a booth just outside. There's actually a couple booths that, that as we leave, feel free to check out. But the booth on the left-hand side has... <clears throat> excuse me, some QR codes that'll take you to the webpage. And it has a list of all the um, mission journeys for next year. But the ones that are labeled specifically for Kairos are obviously driven by the Kairos team. Yeah. So um, the ones that, that you guys have are the Hawaii? Oh, no, no. Well, Hawaii Alaska? is like on our bucket list. We'd like to do that someday. So but the we Hawaii are going... one's on the, web, on the webpage. You can go, yeah, but right. that's we'll, not we'll the one. Sorry, it. my we'll bad. We'll own it. <laughs> Okay, we'll figure that one out, all right? But, like, what we are doing is we're doing two awesome places. One is Alaska. So we're going to go to Alaska uh, this summer. And if you've never been to Alaska, it's cool. You don't even have to have a password to go there. So that's really cool. Uh, but we're going to be serving in Alaska. And then the other one is Greece. So we're going to be going to Greece. We will do some sightseeing. But the, 
The real reason we're going is because we're going to be serving refugees there in a refugee camp uh, and sharing the gospel of Jesus. And here's something I'm really fired up about. One of our Kairos uh, members is going there for a year. So we can go say hi, uh, connect with him, and cheer him on. So like, that's really cool. That's also something that's new for Kairos. We haven't had someone go off for a year in a long time. And it's my hope that we'd be a place that just continues to send people, right? Like we'd just be like, hey, we're, we're sending people to, to Nashville and to the nations. Let's go. And that's what we want to do tonight when we say just yes. Because these, these steps are ones that we can just take tonight. We can say, like, I want to help some families. I want to volunteer. I'm going to sign up for a mission trip. But then there's other things that God's going to call us to that are a lifetime. And we don't know what those are yet. But we want to be ready when he says yes. Cool? So at the end of the night, you'll find out more about this later. But just while, as you go through those doors, there's some booths. You can get more information. Um, but as we close out, I just want to close in a word of prayer. Can I, can I do that as we close out this series of saying yes? Um, I'm going to just pray for us, and we'll like have some more worship. But let me just pray and say, say this to the Lord. Jesus, thank you that, uh, that you, you aren't just God with Mary or God with David in the Bible or, or God with the disciples, but you're God with us. And uh, you, you give us an opportunity to um, have you in our life. And you're not just the God of the dead or a God of the past, but you're a God of the living and the now. And you're still calling us. You're still calling us to say yes. And we don't know what the answer, uh, what the question might be, but we do know what the answer is. Our answer is God, we're in. Our yes is on the table. Whenever you want us to say yes, we will say yes. And so God, I pray that you give us the courage to say yes to you. And I pray for uh, the hearts of those who are listening tonight. Some of us are so scared to even get into that space. But I pray that they would have courage tonight to know that you have what's best for them. And you love them so much. And you see them. And you see us right where we are. You see our brokenness, you see our pain, you see our fears and securities, you see our, our sins and our past, and you look at us and you say, you are mine, I love you. And I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're mine. And I have something for you that's more beautiful than you could imagine. Would you just say yes to it? Because I have something for you. Some of us just need to say yes because God has been chasing us down for a long time. And what he wants us to do is, the question is, would you come home? If that's you tonight, you've been running. Your yes is simply to say, God, I want to come home. If that's you, he will answer it. So right now, just take the moment and say yes. It's in your name we say amen.